Coal seam gas, while controversial, is supposed to be environmentally clean. But a new scientific study raises serious doubts about the green credentials of the expanding coal seam gas industry, suggesting it's far dirtier than it claims. Peter McCutcheon reports. These scientists are searching for a missing but vital piece of information. Using new technology, they're trying to measure the amount of leaking methane in coal seam gas fields. All good. Yep, yep. it's gone. And their results so far are striking. We're talking about three and a half uh, times higher than expected. It's a very significant study in the Australian context. This work raises serious questions about one of the central premises of the entire coal seam gas industry that it's a cleaner fuel with a vital role to play in curbing greenhouse gas emissions. This study now points in the direction that we've been saying for a long time, this is a dirty, polluting industry. CSG is a major employer and is creating more than 18,000 jobs in Queensland alone. Coal seam gas is booming across southern Queensland and is now expanding into New South Wales. The industry is pushing its economic benefits as well as its green credentials. Natural coal seam gas. It's cleaner, it's safer, it's jobs, it is the future. When we compare it against the other options, uh, primarily coal, it's up to 70% less greenhouse gas emissions. But there's one critical element in this equation that we know very little about. How many greenhouse gas emissions leak into the atmosphere during the extraction process, what the industry calls fugitive emissions. Fugitive emissions are emissions that escape from the intended process of production. So they're emissions that escape maybe through pipelines or from wellheads or through the soil that aren't an intended part of the process of generating the natural gas. So in an attempt to measure these elusive emissions, researchers from the Southern Cross University took part of their laboratory into the field around northern New South Wales and the Tara gas fields in southern Queensland. This is new technology, so our specific approach of driving a car and taking readings on the go is new. This method allowed them to take many more samples than was previously available. As expected, their spectrometer recorded low atmospheric levels of methane outside the gas fields. But once they got near the gas wells, the picture changed quite dramatically. They're extremely high. They're some of the highest ever found anywhere. Those concentrations are higher than uh, found in Siberia, in some of the largest gas fields uh, from Russia. It could be a one-off. That's the problem with doing one study. We don't know. What we now need to do is to check, firstly, the same field as it evolves through its stages of production, and secondly, to see whether this is happening elsewhere. Carbon cycle scientist Professor Peter Rayner has studied the Southern Cross University data and agrees it raises some significant questions. He says the data suggests the methane came from under the ground, which could have serious consequences. The problem is that methane is a much more serious greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. So every little bit of methane that you leak as you try and uh, mine this stuff, process it or burn it, contributes much more than the carbon dioxide. And that's bad news for any industry operating under a carbon tax. But the industry's peak body, the Australian Petroleum Production and Exploration Association, says this is all highly speculative. I think the study is incomplete. I think there's much more work that needs to be done before they can reach conclusions. Do I think that this would fundamentally change the industry? No. These are, uh, as you said, very small amounts that we're working with here, and even within the range that are being talked about, it would not fundamentally change the equation that says gas is better for the environment than coal. They can drill and they can mine over my smouldering bones. But those farmers and environmentalists who have been campaigning against CSG are asking why these sort of studies weren't done before the industry was given the green light. Governments give them a big push. Off they go. No preliminary research, no baseline studies, no precautionary principle applied. Just let them loose on the environment and then do your studies a decade or so later. Hey, Matt, what's happening there? I can see the and on that point at least, these researchers agree. But with no baseline study, 
they admit it's difficult to assess the true significance of their findings. I think the takeout message is that we got to uh, make sure we take samples before we change the way the environment is working. Uh, we found very high concentrations and we are now in a position, what the hell that means? Should have this been done 10 years ago? Oh, I think uh, 10, 15, uh, the, the issue is now, um, uh, should we support um, ongoing development and research? Yes, we should, and, and that's what our position is. Peter McCutcheon there.